What's going on everybody? My name is Raif Durazi and today I'm happy to share with you this video that I helped record back in December of 2022 for World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day is recognized every year on December 1st. So Horizon Creator Community asked me to be a part of this panel for World AIDS Day to help bring awareness, education, basically all the advocacy I do anyway to share my personal experiences and stuff like that. But this time in the metaverse. And if you're not familiar with the metaverse is, it's essentially virtual reality land where, for example, it's for what, let me get this out of my mouth. <laughs> the internet and social media was to the 2000s and the 2010s, what the metaverse will be for the 2020s moving forward and on into the future. It's like we're taking what, what, what we know as a two-dimensional screen with internet, with social media, with all the, the e-commerce that we do, all everything, essentially, the way we interact with other human beings, and then we're taking it into a 3D world via a headset. And these controlly doodads, I, I know that they've like managed to integrate certain, like you can even use your fingers and, and stuff like that. And I'm sure that it's just gonna get more and more complex and more and more interesting. So it's really exciting. And um, I went into the metaverse, specifically Horizon Creator Communities. They are tasked by Meta to create these spaces for community that are safe spaces, but that encourage community, that encourage creativity, and um, also talking about difficult topics like there's LGBTQIA community and there's this was focused on HIV education and awareness and stigma reduction. So some of these really creative developers created essentially a whole world dedicated to World AIDS Day and HIV education, stigma reduction, and, and, and most importantly, creating a place where community can get together and talk and discuss and have these kinds of dialogues. So it was really cool. They did a really good job um, creating this place. If I get some screenshots or video, I'll definitely share it with you. They also, within that little world, created a stage where we could have our panel, which you'll see in just a minute, and then um, seating for the audience, and a bunch of people showed up. It was really cool and engaging that we had a Q&A. So I'm finally excited to share our whole panel discussion with you. It was me and two other gentlemen who had HIV and then our host moderator. So check it out. Well, I would love for us to um, actually introduce ourselves. And so I will go last and maybe we'll start with Jay, if you'd introduce yourself. Sure, so I am JWLA and naturally with JWLA, I'm from LA. <laughs> so um, happy to be here. I am uh, a survivor of HIV for 11 years and uh, this is a labor of love for us all to be here and share um, and educate the best we can in order to help prevent, uh, you know, the virus from being spread. And uh, we were here to dispel myths and, uh, you know, empower you for your, mm -hmm. for your uh, best life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Franklin. Thanks, and this is, I like to introduce Franklin. Franklin is my mentor of many, many years mm -hmm. and the long-term HIV survivor. So Franklin, take it away there. My name is Franklin, and I've been a long-term survivor of uh, HIV and AIDS for 42 years. And mm -hmm. when I found out that I was sick, there was no test for HIV. But I wound up experiencing and having shingles and thrush and didn't know what that was about. Fortunately, mm -hmm. I saw a uh, doctor on the Upper East Side in New York who was gay and predominantly most of his patients were gay as well, who were experiencing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And in 1985, I wound up get, getting tested and the test came out positive for HIV. Yeah. And fortunately I was able to live for 18 years without needing any medica medication. Mm -hmm. In that time, I saw about 10 friends of mine who mm -hmm. passed away from AIDS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And wow. um, so it was difficult. So I mm -hmm. worked in the hospital at that time too and wound up caring for people who were HIV positive wow. and had AIDS. Mm -hmm. so wow, me had to be supportive. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. 
I'm really glad you're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Raif. Raif. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Raif Derazi. Um, I was diagnosed more recently um, in 2012 with AIDS. Um, I also had experienced oral um, thrush as well as shingles, mm -hmm. as well as a host of other symptoms. Mm -hmm. I was at the point where my doctor said if I got a cold, I could end up with pneumonia in the hospital and possibly wow. die. So it was pretty um, late stage. Uh, fortunately, the medicine has progressed so much in the last few decades that I was able to get on medication right away. And within a the time span of six to nine months, I was back up and running at full speed mm. almost. Wow. Um, undetectable within that time. And so no longer transmittable either. Um, yeah. So that was on my 27th mm. birthday. Um, and then so it's about, about this past May 8th was my 10 year Wow. Uh, anniversary since then but yeah. for me coming out at that time and looking for representation and visibility on social media especially youtube as an educational source mm -hmm. i really wasn't seeing a whole lot of people who mm -hmm. look like me or who were mm -hmm. speaking out about themselves and just trying to go mm -hmm. about living life so i felt Im the imperative to kind of go about doing that myself and so i really started mm -hmm to advocate on social media and share my life and my personal struggles. And that has mm. ballooned from there and turned into my life's work and my passion. Mm. I also decided I wanted to, I really wanted to reclaim my health in a really um, vis visible and physical way. So I started competing in bodybuilding. I'm a natural men's physique bodybuilder. I mm. became a pro in 2019, placed third at uh, Muscle Beach in Venice. So that was like a big um, wow. kind of claim wow. to my mm -hmm. health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. The summit yeah. on the other mm -hmm. side of a very low mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So I'm just uh, taking in so much there, including that between the three of you, we're upwards of 60 plus years living with HIV. Yeah. And mm. so just really appreciating all that experience and wisdom on this couch and honored, deeply honored to be here. And before I just dive in, because I'm just so excited to have this conversation with the three of you, I will also introduce myself. So I'm Ruth or RC Deggs. Um, before I fell down the rabbit hole of the metaverse, I worked in uh, clinical settings in a variety of roles, including working with HIV patients and team members who were supporting those patients. And this was probably, um, I guess, seven, eight years ago. And so I learned um, that I had a specific like love for people who encountered, worked with, and also suffered from this disease or were managing it. There was something about the resiliency and the purposefulness that really brought me in and, and brought my passion forward. So this is a dream come true of many years, being able to amplify and build space to innovate how we have conversations around topics and areas that we're scared about. Uncomfortable conversations, that's like my jam. And mm -hmm. um, this specifically for me is not just comfortable, but also comforting to be able to like share space with people who are living their lives on purpose like you. And so part of the design of this world is to allow us to drop beneath all the questions that a lot of times people who are marginalized or pushed out or have some kind of specific characteristic, we make them kind of instinctually, we turn them into Google and we ask all those questions that we could actually <laughs> very quickly access through our handheld devices and, and learn good information there. So some of these panels were about like giving you that chance to educate yourself and go to those places and learn about what HIV is. Some of that information will probably come up today as we're talking and feel free if, if you're just really having some curiosity that you think could be answered there to wander around. Our voices are global so you can keep listening to us and I'm really glad everyone's here. Yay. Yes. Okay. We have confetti in VR, so this is a fun conversation. Um, so along those lines of dropping beneath the main pieces of what HIV is and making you the teachers of HIV, 
I really enjoyed a, a pre-conversation we had where one of the questions I was asking is, what is it like to live in 2022 with HIV? And how does that compare to where your awareness was in the beginning? And so I will start with Raif, because that was one okay. of the questions I felt your passion around, and then we'll go down the line. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, it's a stark contrast to when I was first diagnosed. Initially, mm -hmm. I firmly believed that I was going to be dead in two to three years. So, wow. you know, instinct instinctively, I was like, oh, my God, OK, I'm, I'm going to die. So what do I do now? Like, do I finish? Do I go? Do I go to school? Do I? Am I supposed to get a job? Like, what are the logistics? <laughs> do I say yeah. goodbye to people He's and, and travel the world and try to do my bucket list and, and whatnot? Um, and then I quickly learned that that was not the case anymore, mm -hmm. and that getting on effective treatment was going to really get me back to where I want to be. And then at mm -hmm. that point, it was really about okay what do I want my life to be moving forward? Cause I, it's really all in my power and, mm. and really what's hold, what, what would hold me back is my own limiting belief system, my own self doubt um, and my mm. own mental health. Mm. So I've really made it a conscious effort that HIV is a very tiny min minuscule part of my life. It's a very, I mean, it's not because I've dedicated my life to advocacy, mm. but <laughs> as far as, <laughs> you know, like how my relationship with it personally, it's, mm. it's one pill that I take once a day. Mm. And then outside of that, I just go about living my life. And like, you I are. ask myself, what, what do I want to do with my life? And mm. that's it. And I, my, I guess my relationship now, and it sounds a little funny to say, but, I see my diagnosis and I see my HIV as a blessing in a way. Mm. It's mm -hmm. a bit of a, um, a miracle and that it woke me up mm. um, in my late twenties wow. because I'd been living most of my life with a victim mindset. Mm. I'm not gonna, I won't go too deep right now, but as a mm. kid, I was a victim. I went through a lot of abuse mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. And mm. I carried that mentality going with me into an adult. And I think it really held me back from living mm. my full life. And mm -hmm. so it, my diagnosis and almost dying made me realize how fragile and and precious life is. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, I've got a second chance at this. So mm -hmm. what do I need to fix inside? What do I need to change, heal in order to move forward and like live and thrive mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. be happy? Wow. That question, what do I need to change in my life to live and thrive and be happy? And how you've taken this moment where like the ground fell out from underneath you and yeah. it was it was the end was in sight and, and actually built a bridge out of it. And, and it was really about taking ownership of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's no longer life is happening to me, but I'm going to decide what's going to happen moving mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. And the practice of that on a daily basis, that pill becomes totally. a symbol, I imagine, of, of that choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Thank you. Yay. Uh, Franklin, what about you? Sure. What, what is it like from the beginning to now as a comparison? Just well, the beginning, was, the beginning was filled with an enormous amount of uncertainty um, mm -hmm. because I was getting sick and I didn't know why I was getting sick. So, and I pretty much mm -hmm. did not mm -hmm. realize what was hap happening to me until I was tested. Mm -hmm. And once I was tested, I just felt that with the information that was there, that I was mm -hmm. not going to be around much longer. Wow. So I, um, I created a bucket list and mm -hmm. one of the things was to travel. So I traveled. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then I, hmm? I'm and then appreciating I came, that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Then I came back home and I pretty much had to decide what I was going to do with my life. I was dealing mm -hmm. with caring for a lot of friends of mm -hmm. mine who were had AIDS. Mm -hmm. And I would go to the hospital to visit them, to take them in a wheelchair around the block wow. uh, just so that they could get out and get air. Mm -hmm. And um, it was an enjoyable experience. Also, mm -hmm. I wound up developing um, uh, 
uh, what do you call it when you uh, hmm. are sort of feel guilty about living? Mm -hmm. Survivor's guilt. Like survivor's guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. yeah, I was of experiencing course. survivor's guilt because so many people I knew had died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I was wondering why me? Why am I surviving this illness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what purpose do I have in life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at that time, I was just devoting myself to caring for other people who were ill. Yeah. And, um, it went on to whereas now I got involved in many studies for HIV and AIDS. Mm -hmm. And currently I'm involved in the reprieve, UCLA reprieve study. Mm -hmm. And it it's for uh, men who are 50 years and older. Wow. And mm -hmm. they, they're testing the medication, the statin, to see how it works with the heart and with cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm enjoying that and mm -hmm. finding out a lot of information about myself. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I do public speaking. I also did uh, facilitator training for mm -hmm. a uh, group with Pacific Lions Care Wellness Center. And mm -hmm. the clients who were HIV positive uh, uh, facilitated support group me meetings mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about people, learned a lot about connecting with one another and mm -hmm. supporting one another in a different wow. way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Franklin. Mm -hmm. I There's so much in your story. I, I feel like I, I just read the, the preface to a book where I'm like, I'm probably <laughs> yeah. gonna read this whole book in the next three days, kind of thing. Like, um, it's it's so intense to imagine going from wheeling your friends around to help them get fresh air to believing that you might die also, and and then to be. I can only imagine how bizarre this must feel to be in virtual reality and looking at all these legless uh, humans sitting with us today, and mm -hmm. and. And just realizing where we are now, that how it would be yes. different even back then. So, mm -hmm. so much richness. And, Thank you for and sharing. And I'm, one, I'm wondering with the reprieve study, which is to basically figure out for people who have been living with long-term survivors of HIV and AIDS, ah, how okay. the medication is going to affect our mm -hmm. bodies yeah. wow. in the okay. long run. And yes, thank you for bringing that back up. This piece about both of you in getting active around HIV and actually becoming not just the one who is seeking healing and treatment, but the healer and the one who's facilitating right. that healing journey, waking people up to their own possibility as leaders and as, as journeyers on purpose. Maybe those mm -hmm. are my words for you both, journeyers yeah. on right. purpose. So, mm -hmm. mm, so rich, so rich. Um, Jay, what about you? Yeah. Where where did you go from then till now? Wow. Well, it was a shock, obviously, uh, <laughs> to learn of my status. And at first, I was in denial uh, for the for the longest period of time. I was like, this can't be happening. And immediately, I sought community. I, I sought resources because I didn't know how I was going to survive such a scary experience of uh, with when the fact that i already was dealing with depression and anxiety so you can imagine adding that on top of of things you're just like oh god how, how can you stand another you know major life change um mm -hmm. and so i had to go through a lot of um just soul searching i would say you know and figure out where i'm going to find the best support and I'm grateful because it led me to this man right here, Franklin, and uh, he was a huge and is still a huge part of my journey um, and really helped me on, on my path. I was really in a very difficult position. I went to an HIV support group, met him for the first night, shared my story, and uh, and he took me in. 
and really just helped me um, get me back on my feet and find my way. And so in many ways, I'm grateful. Like, you know, you always have to find the silver lining in such a, you know, in such a negative situation. And this was my glimmer of hope and knowing that there's there's a long term survivor here that I can learn a lot from a mentor that can really help me navigate the system because there's a lot of stuff you have to learn um, about, you know, finding the resources in order to get the medication, to get support. And uh, mm-hmm. so finding community is super, super important. Mm-hmm. And then since, um, you know, since our friendship and all that, then eventually I got to the point where I, I was going to go ahead and move forward and take the medications because for the longest time I wasn't going to do the medications. I didn't believe I was positive. I had a hard time accepting it. And I didn't understand how it happened. It just, I didn't think I was doing anything that was risky to the point. And I don't, mm-hmm. and, you know, I had to get beyond that. And uh, mm-hmm. so once I got beyond that, I uh, had a friend who was a holistic uh, practitioner and she begged me to get on the medications because I was wasting away mm-hmm. because my viral load was out of control. I wasn't, you know, believing that this was happening, but my body was taking a toll and she begged me she said if you're you know if you're not going to go the holistic path and at least get on these medications and it saved my life it, it, it definitely did and i've been on multiple medications and different you know, regimens since there's a lot of side effects that come along with that there's the, what i call my hiv days where you just don't want to get out of bed or you just have a really hard time functioning you know headaches gastrointestinal issues um, and I think it's really important that even though there's a one pill a day that I am on and I am un- undetectable, which we'll get into all of that, it isn't mm-hmm. a quick fix. You do have your your positive and your negative days and in, and it can change moment to moment. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And so I would just say, you know, uh, thank God we are where we're at with the medications today because they are saving lives. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you do take your body takes a toll with being on those medications Mm -hmm. there are side effects that affect your liver affect your kidneys affect you know everybody's different but Mm -hmm. for me it's definitely affected me yeah Mm -hmm. wow as you tell that story i've been just lately in my life i kind of like really think about words and i pull them apart and i've been contemplating the frames of um fate and destiny and what's in between those where we mm-hmm. feel cursed or we feel blessed yeah. and we feel like there's a promise or there's a threat. And, mm-hmm. and so I'm just feeling this whole journey along your life where um, I imagine in the beginning, this felt like a curse. This felt like doom oh, yeah. and fate and just the end. Mm-hmm. And then the just, you know, Franklin, I've never met you in physical reality yet. What, whereas Jay, you and I have, but, just mm-hmm. the presence that Franklin brings, the groundedness that Franklin yes. brings to to a legless avatar where I'm just like, <laughs> okay, you know, if I, if I could summarize like uh, uh, words I feel like Franklin says in all the ways he talks is, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be okay. And he and says how, that quite often. Yes. How grounding that mm-hmm. would be at a time of such terror. And, and mm-hmm. also very candidly, you were really strapped you were actually not in any sort of stable housing or situation Mm -hmm. to get treatment Mm -hmm. and so now here this moment is you're you're bringing franklin into the next wave of our humanity and you're bringing franklin and giving him a spot and helping him belong Mm -hmm. and i'm so glad what a treasure to have you both here yeah i'm just the journey the three of you have just shared here it feels like a, you know 200 years worth of wisdom and and mm-hmm. also pain as you've mm-hmm. had to find your own words and discover your own truth around what hiv means to you but also what does living mean to you oh, yeah. and what does what right. does being in relationship with our community mean to you mm-hmm. and and Correct. and how are you choosing your community on purpose because you know your life is on purpose mm-hmm. yeah I read um, recently in some of the research of, of, uh, and, and gathering of data that up to 13% of people who have HIV right now don't know they have it. Mm. And I wonder what that is like for you, 
having that awareness of your own journey of how you finally made that decision to get tested and what would you say to that that you that started to have that inkling of something's not okay i'm not okay mm -hmm. what would you if you could go back in time not just to get yourself to get tested because that's where we go we go to the fix of it right mm -hmm. but but also to just like comfort yourself what would you say to yourself back then knowing the journey you were about to find out you were on mm. well to jump in, I've definitely heard um, percentages that far exceed 13% wow. in, wow. in certain communities. Um, even here in mm -hmm. LA, I've seen upwards of like 30% pre-COVID. Wow. So yeah. I, there's a lot of folks, you know, walking around living their life and have no idea that, and yeah. most of them with no malintent, but yeah. um, just, you know, just aren't expecting that just like jay was saying don't expect anything like that yeah i certainly yeah. didn't um around the time before my diagnosis i was in a three and a half year what i thought was a monogamous relationship mm -hmm. and i just started progressively getting more and more sick and a mm -hmm. lot of people they'll say well wasn't wasn't that obvious then you were getting sick like why wouldn't you have gone to the doctor and and mm -hmm. gotten tested at that point and figured it out why did it mm -hmm. progress all the way to aids mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i often have to explain that um as someone as a childhood as a child who dealt with a lot of anxiety and stress mm -hmm. i had naturally have a weakened immune system and i would get sick like once a month once every three months mm -hmm. if i was sick once in three months i was like okay i'm doing good <laughs> like I haven't mm -hmm. come down with anything lately. This is great. Mm -hmm. So for me to have little things like thrush and not know what mm -hmm. it was, pain in my throat, um, swollen lymph nodes, um, mm -hmm. like skin rashes and things like that, mm -hmm. or even getting vertigo randomly, mm -hmm. headaches and what have you. I'd never, it never would have occurred to me that all those things were threaded together in, in mm -hmm. one thing. And then on top of that, being in a relationship, I'm like, that's not, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to have an ST, STD, STI. That doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. Mm -hmm. So it can't be that. Like, a, mm -hmm. that's, it was in the back of my head, but it wasn't, mm -hmm. didn't seem obvious to me. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it wasn't until I was so sick. Mm -hmm. And that was the other thing. I didn't have health insurance. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's not like, okay, let me just uh, make an appointment and Pop go over to, to the see doctor. the doc. Yeah, that's really, really no. difficult. Yeah. That was a major hurdle for me. So mm -hmm. it wasn't until my throat hurt so bad that, and it was so painful that I was like, I have to go mm -hmm. to the county hospital and I'm going to sit there for, I sat there for nine hours until wow. I could see a doctor. Wow. And, and that was just the initial for testing and, and review. And yeah. I had to come back wow. and sit there for another eight hours yeah. before I finally got treated. Mm. Um, and Oof. that's when I found out. So wow. just to answer quick, the second, yeah. yeah, I don't mean to interrupt, but just real quick, I just want to make sure everybody can hear Raif because I'm hearing from other people that you cannot hear him out there. Oh. So can you guys hear him? You can't hear him. You can hear him. Some people can hear you and some people can't. Uh oh. So yeah. raise your hand if you can't hear Raif. Raise your hand. DJ. Oh, strange. He's not in globals, what we're hearing. Yeah, that's oh. what I'm being told by Mavix. Okay. Yeah. That's thank you for that information. Can you do um, that? A... Yeah. So one suggestion we're gonna we're gonna do a little troubleshooting here. Please please mm -hmm. pause and watch. Um, one suggestion would be to exit out the stage there and then just okay. walk around and come back in, and we'll yeah, see if that just actually. It. Fix it. Thank you, Jay, for noting that. That's, yeah. That's well, important. it's yeah. <laughs> Rafe is waving at yes. us. Yes. And okay. reappearing. Okay. okay. Try talking. Let's do a mic now. check. Yeah. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. Raise your hand if you can't it. hear Rafe. So, so, so the cameras we we can hear all good as well. Okay. 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 Great. Just want hey. to make sure everyone can hear properly. All right. Yeah. Thank oh, you, Mavix, thank for you. that spot. Yeah. So. So okay, to recap here, what mm -hmm. I'm hearing is your journey was also very influenced around getting tested by not having health insurance mm -hmm. and 
that the, the illness started to become so chronic and so disabling that it forced you to that place where you were willing to sit in in a county hospital and wait for yeah. 10 hours of the eight hours and and just mm -hmm. go through that torture of understanding what you might face when you got that care but finally yeah. deciding you had to face it mm -hmm. and then to answer your, the second part of your question even before um being in a relationship and before getting sick getting an HIV diagnosis was probably my worst fear in life. Mm -hmm. um, I remember distinctly when I came out to my mom and told her that I want to um, I want to accept being gay. Because initially when mm -hmm. it came out, I was going to church. I was Christian. I basically went through conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. And wow. there was a point where that wasn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. And so when I told my mom, you know, I'm going to I'm just going to accept being gay. She responded out of fear you are going to end up in jail. Somehow I'm a criminal and wow. you're going to get yeah. HIV and AIDS and you're going to end up dying. Mm. So it was yeah. like, it was uh, partly like that fear was like that she would be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Her yeah. perception of me as a gay person was right. Yeah. was accurate. Yeah. And I'm just yeah. a fool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's where that fear came from. And yeah. also, of, of course, course, of dying. And yeah. so the words of encouragement I would have for myself is mm -hmm. there is no scenario in which you get tested and you lose because mm -hmm. if you don't get tested and I hear so much of people who are paranoid and stressed and so much anxiety that they have HIV mm. and they are too afraid to get tested. And so they're living mm -hmm. with this pressure and mm -hmm. this burden constantly mm -hmm. every day. Yeah. And if they if you don't get tested, then you're just living in that and you might get mm -hmm. tested and be negative. And so mm -hmm. you're releasing yourself of all that, you mm -hmm. know, anxiety. Mm -hmm. And if you are positive, then you can finally get on treatment mm -hmm. and then you can learn and, and realize that you mm -hmm. can move on with your life once you do that. Wow. wow. And so there, there's a, a piece about recognizing that if I'm concerned about having HIV, part of the disease that I'm already in is the terror of what I think that means. Exactly. And, right. and the first step in my own healing, whether I have HRV or not, is actually just to choose to face that information and, mm -hmm. and get mm -hmm. that, get that support, get that, get that access to mm -hmm. more medical care, more whatever I need. Because in your yeah. case, even if you hadn't been positive, you were sick, you were having multiple illnesses, and you totally. needed medical support, period. Mm -hmm. And exactly. so, so you're, you're recognizing that even despite the incredible stigma and harm of what your mother said, you released yourself before you even found out you had HIV, you, mm -hmm. you let yourself like, mm -hmm. find out and walk through that door. And, and define that differently because otherwise that might still be haunting you in your head just as right. a its own kind of prison yeah. believing that yeah thank you wow mm -hmm. and franklin or jay would you like to comment on that of what would you tell yourself if you could go back before you got tested to just acknowledge the path ahead and how to accept what was coming i would basically tell myself to calm down because I was afraid uh, mm -hmm. when I got tested, a lot had come out of my HIV and then the symptoms involved mm -hmm. with being HIV positive, I knew I had. Mm -hmm. And I was uncertain because there was no test. So mm -hmm. I really could not find out, wow. you know, if I was HIV positive or negative. Mm -hmm. So I became afraid about a great many things and one in particular, because my partner and I were having unprotected sex. Mm -hmm. And then I, I developed a fear about that of not wanting to give someone else HIV. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I was it glad was... To, to take the mm -hmm. test. It was a tremendous yeah. relief. Wow. You know, then we could, I could protect mm -hmm. myself and protect and him partner. and fortunately mm -hmm. he was negative wow. and um 
I went on, you know, with my <laughs> life until we divorced mm -hmm. and it became so stressful for me and so filled with tremendous sadness, mm -hmm. you know, just engulfed my life mm -hmm. that my T cells plummeted. Wow. And I had, within a week, I went from having a T cell count to 1100 which is very mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. to have an T cell count of 198, wow. which oh. meant that I had AIDS. Mm -hmm. And I became fearful at that point. Mm -hmm. My doctor told me, you really have to make plans because mm -hmm. we're not certain that we could help you. And mm -hmm. the only drug that was available was Crixivan. And fortunately, a best friend of mine is a physician. And he told me, he gave me great advice. He said, don't take that because with the your health condition as it is right now, I'm, I think that that drug might do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And uh, so he recommended, he worked with the Ryan White Foundation. Mm -hmm. And he knew of a new drug that had just been approved by the FDA, mm -hmm. but was not on the market yet. So he called my doctor and told him how to get that drug for me. Hmm. Well, wow. Wow. Mm. So and, uh, Franklin, I hear so many rich pieces in your story. One of the pieces, though, you said that I want to echo is that concept of calm down. I feel anxiety imagining what you were going through. And I also know that recently uh, Jack Johnson came out with a, an album called Calm Down, or like one of the songs is Calm Down. And during my own intense storm recently, I would listen to that song on repeat. And so yeah. I think that it's how we deliver those messages th to ourselves that matters. And if I imagine mm -hmm. Franklin saying, calm down, Ruth, I'm like, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, I'll get on the ground. So mm -hmm. it really depends on who's holding that voice and what, what I think the experience comes from and how mm -hmm. much healing you have brought and support you've brought since then you're compensating for that terror you were feeling by saying not only calm down but yay you have a test now like this is a big aha moment yeah. for me we're scared of right. getting tested but you didn't have the choice to get tested and so there's a convenience and an opportunity right now that we don't even think about i found out actually in this i did not know this you can just order tests on Amazon, like, or, or somewhere else. You, you don't necessarily have to like even be seen by somebody to get tested. Mm -hmm. And that's an incredible privilege that we have, especially in the U S or in countries that are more developed to be able to like access Correct. that level of anonymity and, and just gather the info. So, mm -hmm. So, Jay, your turn, and then I want to open us up for some questions. We've just oh, really yeah, dived sure. deep here. So, yeah, what would you tell yourself? Well, I would probably tell myself uh, it's a roller coaster and take it moment to moment uh, mm -hmm. because there's going to be highs and lows. And uh, it's, you know, moment to moment, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a presence piece to that mm -hmm. of... Um, what we fear is almost maybe the cumulative effect of what we've been told or like if you were taking a moment moment to moment you'd be going am i in jail i am not so i am not the fool mm -hmm. and i have not become you know that mm -hmm. even if you were in jail that doesn't mean those things are connected that doesn't mean that mm -hmm. that your mother was right and so right. being in the moment but, gives you that yeah. segment of of time exactly yeah and that it's a roller coaster you know and, and expect the highs and the lows and what Raif was saying earlier about you know as as gay men we come out to you know to our families our friends and 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 they're always going to be worried about hiv and and all of that and then once you get exposed and you develop hiv uh and you know and become positive you go through a process where you're like when do you tell them because it's like coming out all over again it's already steeped in so much yeah. stigma and shame that it's a very difficult process depending on who you're coming out to and mm -hmm. raif also brought up the point about being religious and i was deeply mm -hmm. religious and grew up in a religious household mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. another piece of it you know and that you don't want to worry your your family and 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 about the eternal you know uh, 
to your eternal Jesus. soul, essentially. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. so I grew up in, in church for 18 years and assistant to the youth pastor and the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I had a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, and I didn't even understand how this happened. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, wow. that was really challenging for me. So it was, so, like I said, it's a shock. It was a shock. Yeah. That's the roller coaster. And that's the moment to moment because what you know, what's next? <laughs> that's okay. really what you ask yourself. What's next? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm, I'm going to invite you all to think about if you have any questions. But before we, we go to questions from you, I have one more for each mm -hmm. of you. Just to acknowledge where we're at. We're in this kind of semi-futuristic alternate reality setting and i'm curious if you have any instincts or wishes or dreams what is your identity of having hiv look like as the metaverse continues to grow even one year from now where do you want to be in in the 2.0 of what we're doing today mm -hmm. i would love to be a guide in that mm -hmm. sense, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, kind of what Jay has been with me and you have been as well. Mm -hmm. um, you have and been with me. <laughs> I've followed <laughs> you on YouTube forever before meeting you. So this is, yeah, yeah. And help yeah. Exactly. kind of you already bring there. more of, of, of that from the physical world into VR. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. A whole new meaning to the concept of guides in the metaverse. So well, that's what we're doing here in this world, them. this that's beautiful it. world that, that it's a labor of love. We're guiding people around to the different kiosks and ed educating them about HIV in the metaverse. And, and, and this is a worldwide community. And it's just amazing to, to, to do what we're doing. And hopefully next year we're going to have all kinds of, of diverse, you know, we'll have women on, you know, we'll have, um, we'll have transgender on, on, on the stage. Like we're going to have a very diverse group of, of people mm -hmm. um, sharing mm -hmm. their stories as well, you know, and of how mm -hmm. they're thriving and mm -hmm. surviving HIV, you know. Like a international circle mm -hmm. of those affected by HIV. And mm -hmm. maybe we'll have like a, a question piece where I put the question on and whoever, whoever hits the button first gets to maybe answer. Mm -hmm. So we could have a, rapid fire like sharing it's very sweet yeah when we have more capacity we'll be able to include the world that you built for covid that you converted into hiv awareness where mm -hmm. you can go into the bloodstream and actually see mm -hmm. hiv and and see the fighter cells and um uh, and you know you, you guys were mentioning earlier about t cells those are the fighter cells that fight off hiv and that's mm -hmm. what that's what you get measured when you have your blood done to see mm -hmm. how healthy you are and where your yeah. t cell count is and your viral yeah. load yeah that can be a whole right. other level of education. We can mm -hmm. learn about it by gamifying it to some degree. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. about you, Franklin? Where do you see HIV and your identity intersecting with the metaverse going forward? Uh, well, the metaverse has been very helpful for me and mm -hmm. having another outlet mm -hmm. to uh, deal with my uh, being HIV positive, but I, my life story, when I talk to my psychiatrist about it and other people, and my aunt is an author mm -hmm. and I told her my story and she told me, she said, why don't you write a book? Mm -hmm. And I said, nah, no one's going to want to read a book about me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she said, no, she said, seriously. Your life has <laughs> been so interesting. Mm -hmm. She said, exactly. I think it will really make Ruth a great mentioned. book. Yeah. And, you mentioned uh, that, Ruth, earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And so she told me, she said, write two chapters mm -hmm. just so I can read it. Because she said, you write so well. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And so I wrote two chapters, and she sent it to a publisher. Whoa. So her publisher called me Hello. on the phone. Wow. and said, we want you to write this book. Wow. So I see myself completing that book by next yeah. year. We're going to have a Metaverse book signing. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Good on her for doing that. Over. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, how beautiful. Well, mm-hmm. I think it's a sign. I, I'm definitely one of your first. Uh, I would like your signature on the book because it it mm-hmm. sounds so. It sounds so rich in a like we're we're getting to see through your hindsight how the story did connect. Mm-hmm. Probably while you were right. in it, it didn't feel as connected. It felt like falling off cliffs and navigating dark alleys and just mm-hmm. being pretty uncertain, like you said, but. I love the idea of a book that shows how dark it can get and how how you end up on a couch in the metaverse talking with yeah. amongst friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. So good. Mm-hmm. So I have a hundred more questions. So if you all don't, I will keep asking, but I want to give you all a <laughs> chance to step up here and Solo will go ahead and approve. So you basically step up to the mic and you grab it and then Solo will um, give you a microphone for a moment. Any questions for our esteemed panel of leaders and healers here? Yeah. And Polcat, you are on mute, but yeah, hold on to the mic and you'll get, um, oh yeah, there you go. Unmute. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And now, Mm -hmm. okay, go ahead, Solo. Hold on one sec, Polcat. They let go, so you gotta re-enable. Okay, should be good. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I, I don't yeah. necessarily have a question for you gentlemen. I just have uh, something to tell you. The book thing is a wonderful ideal. Um, I'm 62 years old. I uh, have survived my friends dying of AIDS. I was there when it first started. I'm a lesbian and all my male friends for the most part are gone. Uh, so I applaud you gentlemen for still being here. Thank you for that. Um, Thank you. But uh, to write a book is a good idea. I wrote a poem. The last friend that I had that died, I wrote a poem, and I did have it published, and I gave that book to his father at the funeral. It mm. helps you, and it helps your friends cope mm. with what's going on. Um, mm. Like I said, I've lost all my male friends, and I mm. pretty much have not even in the gay community anymore because of the crisis that went down and losing everybody I knew. It just kind of like threw me. So it, it, it's hard on you guys, and it's also hard on your friends. And I do applaud you for sticking in there, and I hope all of you the best. Thank you for oh, letting me speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a whole other way to think about it is the love letters right. of telling people the story you continue to live. Yes. That's yeah. what it looks like. Thank you. Who else? Mm-hmm. Questions or reflections? We're getting an echo from Willow, so if she could mute, I'd appreciate that. Oh, yeah, I didn't hear that. Thank you. Yeah, Kim, Kim, go ahead and um, grab the mic. Mm -hmm. And then Solo will approve. Go ahead. Uh, Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I uh, came a little bit late, but I definitely heard um, your stories, and I'm definitely thankful for you Mm -hmm. for sharing them. Uh, I myself am living with um, HIV uh, for mm-hmm. the last five years, and I was diagnosed with AIDS um, wow. prior to that. And um, so I just wanted to make a like two like two comments. Um, one, mm-hmm. I thank all of you for you know you're sharing your stories. I mean, you th- you you three come from like really different backgrounds, and it was really interesting mm-hmm. to hear your stories. Um, I wanted to, um, comment and recognize my, uh, flight attendant colleagues as well, Mm -hmm. um, in my unions, um, that, Mm -hmm. um, support, um, this day every year, um, because we did lose a lot of our colleagues, Mm -hmm. friends, um, Mm -hmm. obviously, uh, if you were living in that age, and even today, um, people are still losing their lives. So um, mm-hmm. I just wanted to recognize them. Uh, third is, um, I don't know if you touched on it, but um, definitely um, testing is, you know, as as you know, as we say, is the most important. And one thing that I was not aware when I, you know, was act, you know, when I had HIV and I was not undetectable. And I didn't know I had it was the fact that um, I didn't think the or quick versus the, you know, prick at a, you know, out the closet or whatnot is the mm-hmm. same effectiveness, but it really is. It's 
that they are 99.9% effective, did both, mm -hmm. and then was very lucky enough to see a, a, you know, a doctor. And again, my, my mm -hmm. personal, um, my, you know, my T cell count was like 180. So that mm -hmm. was a shock and that was very terrifying, but mm -hmm. it was a different time, you know, so I had time to spare, you know, it was not like back then when you really had to, you know, um, per se, uh, I would say, um, hmm. be, be quick and be, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, like strategize what you're going to do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think another point I want to make is, uh, you know, and anyone else can comment on this as well. Maybe the panel mm -hmm. as well is, you know, how do you transition from the, med that you were currently on because it was mm. the best medication uh, mm. i personally take trimec because that was uh back then the you know premier you know like the highest mm -hmm. like the best drug at the time to now there's now uh injectable um you know mm -hmm. that you know that we can take um or you know a two-in-one where it's mm -hmm. less on our liver so that's something that um mm -hmm. i think is important so that's just what i wanted to say and again mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing your stories mm -hmm. and for um making this uh live event yeah thank you so thank much you. and so i heard mm -hmm. a really specific question in that and maybe one of you can answer so we can still invite any other comments or reflections with our, mm -hmm. our last few minutes is how do you transition when you're on a medication that is kind of working, but mm -hmm. there's some incentive to shift? How, what do you tell yourself or how do you make that decision? Yeah. And who's had experience with that? Because maybe not everybody has. So Jay has. Yeah. I have. Oh, yeah. Franklin has. Right? Franklin has. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First of all, I want to say thank you, Kim, for getting up and, and sharing. <laughs> and yeah. you know we support you and we hope this mm -hmm. world supports you yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 thank you jay yeah um, i started it's... off taking i started off taking uh nine pills a day wow. and they were large pills mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. got to a point where new drugs came out so i transitioned to mm -hmm. a triple Mm -hmm. which was one one pill a day mm -hmm. and uh, eventually uh, my system uh, built up resistance to a tripla and my doctor switched me to Jimvoya. and then Javoya worked fine i was undetectable but it caused weight gain mm -hmm. and i had to transition off of that because I was uh, middle-aged and had become diabetic. So my doctor was really concerned about the weight gain. So mm -hmm. I changed from Jim Voya to Big Tarby now, mm -hmm. which is working mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. And so what a journey. I mean, that's so many chapters in themselves, maybe of, of that transitioning yeah. to something that maybe gave more hope, more stability, an idea this could be better for me. And mm -hmm. and any other just brief insight of like what, what I know this is a complicated topic, but what helps you say mm -hmm. yes, finally, to that shift? Well, for me, I, recently I changed, um, and it was because I was going through, I think, heightened anxiety based on the medication that I was on before. And I wasn't even aware that there was the medication that was actually causing me anxiety um, until a doctor met with me and had said that, you know, there is now a new medication that's within, it's made by the same pharmaceutical company, but it's going to be, make it's going to make you less anxious, more, le more or less. And so, um, you know, you may not feel it immediately, but over time you will. And so I, I shifted to that. And also Franklin mentioned the weight gain. I was also gaining weight on the medication that I was on as well. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and that's, I think very challenging because, uh, 
you know, I guess we all gained a lot of weight during COVID. Maybe I mean, I know they say they call it the COVID thirty, but my God, um, so my medication was contributing to that as well, and right. so that was another reason I figured I needed to shift. Franklin did so because of diabetes risk. You know, I did so because I. Uh, could tell that this was not good, and uh, yeah, I needed to shift. Yeah, yeah. and Ray, yeah. What about so maybe you? maybe part of that answer is there's just a cumulative pressure that comes from all the information yeah. about your body and the information yeah. outside, and it just finally gets yeah. over the edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I I took a triplet at one point too, but girl, that that was not the one. She did not like my body. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I would, oh. I had like brain fog. I would have hallucinations and right. like all kinds of stuff. That's right. So what I would try to do is I would try to time my medication at night so that if I would get have side mm -hmm. effects, I would hopefully have it while I was sleeping and not have to deal with mm -hmm. it. But it, yes. so yeah, like right. uh, to your point, it was just obvious. It was the next evolution. Like, okay, yeah. here's something that's that's yeah. less toxic, that has less drugs, mm -hmm. that's most likely mm -hmm. going to have less side effects. Gen Voya yeah. I was put on had zero yeah. side effects. And then I was mm -hmm. encouraged to go on Victarvi. I said, okay, why not? I'll try it. Also, no side effects. So that's mm -hmm. where you're on now, right. Victarvi. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And I'm on Devato. So I transitioned yeah. from Jaluka to Devato. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again to each of you for being here. Mm -hmm. I feel like we just started to wade into the possible conversations and I also just want to celebrate and acknowledge that today all over the world, this is World AIDS Day. This is a day mm -hmm. to come together and recognize not just survivors, but I would say thrivers who are also HIV mm -hmm. positive and recognize those that have not survived or, or have survived until they couldn't anymore. And part of mm -hmm. some of the art pieces you see in here, including this tree back here, is to honor those who have lost their lives with HIV or AIDS related illness. And one of the ways uh, you can contribute is, is by reading these different signs in this world and learning more about how to be an ally, that that's the point of this event. And so um, I'm gonna be sticking around to just meet and enjoy the company of everybody who's been here. Thank you, thank you. Um, and I would invite that all of us, if we are gonna be talking about this really practice using I statements. I feel this, I notice this. When we go into mm -hmm. you statements, as as much as that can feel like uh, safe for us to talk to somebody else about you should, um, mm -hmm. that's not allyship. That's uh, a type of judgment, even if we feel good about it. So um, mm -hmm. just be respectful of your language today and be mindful of that. And there's also a really fun little car catch over there talks about how to be an ally. So go read that. Mm -hmm. um, I would love it if, well, we have everybody gathered, that, that staircase back there is just so pretty. I would love it if we could all line up along there and get a big giant group photo of this is our first HIV awareness mm -hmm. event that is uh, coinciding with an international day and also a bridging in partnership with Queers on Meta. This is a really big deal today. So you're all part mm -hmm. of history in the metaverse. All right. Well, if you stuck it out to the very end and you watched the whole thing, you must have really enjoyed it or you're a completionist like I am. <laughs> maybe you hate, maybe you hated it and you're just like, I have to finish this because I started it. Actually, I'm not a completionist. I'm very ADD when it comes to that stuff. And I usually have like eight, nine or 10 things going on at the same time and none of them are finished. Anyway, that was it. That's kind of gives you a taste of what's, what's possible in the metaverse. Like, I really, that really put into perspective that I need to really think about HIV advocacy, not just being limited to two dimensional space, not just social media, not just via YouTube and things like that, but in a fully immersive three dimensional metaverse type world where I can really connect with other human beings via their avatars. And it just adds a whole nother dimension, if you will, <laughs> as far as what it means to be an advocate. So stick around. This is just the beginning. Um, there's so much we can do in the metaverse. And I'm excited to be trekking out into that frontier with y'all. And I will be sharing it as it happens. Thank you for watching this. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hit that bell so that you get notified. Notified. So that you get notified. 
hit that bell so you get notified every time there is a new video released. And please share this if you think other people can find value in this. All right, toodles.